Hey guys, it's Julian today. I'm going to be talking to you about how to make minimal tech house, sort of like that block style, like artists like Pasa, Proc and Fitch, Clooney, the style where it's, you know, a bit more simple, but there's still a nice amount of stuff going on, and it's a pretty full track. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, all of that from this video right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp, and if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. Alright, here's the project file. The first thing here is the brass, which sounds like this. So for notes, this is really simple. You know, this is where the minimal thing comes in. It's like, you know, with if this wasn't like quote unquote like minimal and we were trying to keep things a bit more full, we could maybe have more notes. But we want this to be really simple. It's just two notes. It's kind of like the same thing every time. And then what makes it interesting is more so like how it's working with everything in the track. So like a really good example here is this little distortion recursion underneath it, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. You know, this brass on its own just going over and over wouldn't be as interesting. But now when you get you know, that kind of makes it a bit more interesting, but in terms of what each instrument is doing on its own, it's very simple. Now, for the sound on this one, it's made with two layers. We have a synth brass layer. And you can hear what that's doing. That's kind of filling out the sound. And then we have this brass stab layer. And so as you can hear, that adds the texture. So, for the analog layer, this is just a saw wave and a square wave detuned a little bit. They're an octave apart. Going into a low-pass filter, which has this kind of like, quick, plucky envelope on it. You can hear that. And then we have the amp envelope like that, so very similar. And then I just have a bit of vibrato and unison. And that's really it for the sound. Again, it's kind of like you're getting this one. And like this one, and then when you hear them on the run, they're not as big, but then when you play them together, you just get this huge, really full sounding stab that fits into the mix really well. Like it really stands out and it's really strong. And that's the thing, like, you know, you want to definitely want to make sure that you're not using like too soft uh, brass stabs here. Like when you have something like this, or it may not even always be this, but just like a similar type of sound, you know, like maybe it's just like a right on the one or something like that. You just always want to make sure it's as big as possible because it can be easy to kind of overlook and end up with something that doesn't really feel that full. And then for effects on this one, so I have the brass stab and the analog inside of an instrument rack, and then on both of those at the same time, we have the short reverb, so that's that little bit of atmosphere you hear. This is really important for making it sound big. If we get rid of this, it's just not the same thing without that kind of thing that comes off of the stab. Then we have the drum bus, which is just fattening this up. And that transient snob kind of compresses it a little bit, so that helps bring out the reverb. And then finally, we just have a high-pass filter. And that's it for the brass. Then we have this distortion percussion. So this is exactly what the title says. It's percussion. I'll play the original sound. So it's like this nice, like, kind of cool bell sound. You can hear, like, a lot of different sort of, like, metal overtones happening there. And then when you distort that, you just get this really interesting, cool sound. And again, it's like all about just how this is blending in with that brass. Because like if we have the track with just the brass, it's not quite as exciting. And if we have just the percussion, You know, but when you put both of these together, it's the way that they work together that creates, that makes both of them work really well in the track. Then we have this little vocal atmosphere thing, which sounds like this. So 
So this is just a little vocal one shot here. And what's happening is it's kind of like playing at the times when the brass stab and the distortion percussion don't play. You can see we get... It's like that. Like, it's just making sure it's not... Because, like, if you just have it go all the way through, like, let's say we just do... That actually does build nice tension, like, that would work well in the break, but in terms of, like, when you already have all this other stuff in the track happening, you know, it goes back to the kind of, like, minimal thing, you know, just only using what you need at any given moment, and by using this vocal here, you know, we do need it there, because there's all this open space without any synths, but then once the synths do come back and that percussion, we can just kind of let the vocal breathe. And it gives kind of a cool stop and start thing. Now for effects on this one, so the first thing here is this echo and reverb. These are working together because you can see we have the quarter note echo. It's on the ping pong setting, so it's going back and forth. And then when we put that into the reverb, it creates like not just a bit of ambience, but like really an atmosphere. So then when this stops, you can hear that. And it's like also using the echo and making it really pronounced like this, you know, it just makes it a bit more rhythmic, so that it's gonna fit in with the actual, like, rhythm of the track. Versus, like, if we just had reverb and, like, a really fast echo where you couldn't hear, like, the dun dun dun, like that, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't be as, like, much kind of fitting into the track. And yeah, after those, we just have a bit of drum bus to fatten this up. This really helps also, like, to bring out the echo and the reverb. It's really important for that with something like this type of sound where you want those to be so pronounced. This is a really great way to bring that out. And then we just have a compressor which side chains it to the kick because you want this to be kind of like... Pumping up like that. And then finally we just have a high pass filter. And yeah, then the next sound here is the bass line. So you can see it's a really simple bass line. The main, so the main sort of like tropes of this bass line would be, first off, it's very much based around eighth notes. It's very much based around how the kick is going, dun, dun, dun. and then this bass is like, uh, kind of like on those upbeats. Like if I play them together, it's going to sound. It's that, like if you just had the bass going like, dun, dun, like at the same time as the kick, it's not going to sound right. So there's that. The next thing about it is the fact that it's so simple. It's only three notes. And they're not touching each other either, so you can really just hear each individual note. And it's a lot easier to be kind of like a more memorable bass line because it's just so simple. It's less stuff for you to remember. And then the last thing that's really like a main thing here would be the call and response. And what I mean by this is if you look, it's the same bass line pretty much every single bar, except the only difference is in the first bar, it ends on this note, and then the second bar, it ends on this note. So you're getting like, like the pattern feels a bit incomplete when it ends on this one, but then it comes back in that next bar, and then when it adds, ends on that, It's like that little call and response there that makes it like really catchy and makes it a memorable bass line. And this is how you make a simple bass line work really well. And that's really something you need to keep in mind. It's like how to use the least amount of notes possible and make the most interesting track with the least amount of notes. For the sound with this one, so this bass needs to be really fat. Something that I noticed when I was listening to references is like it needs to have a lot of low mid-range and mid-range to it. That's where a lot of the fatness is going to come from. But then it's also going to come, like, from just having, like, sheer powerful low ends. So, what I've done here is I've got a square wave and a saw wave. And here's... You can hear it's just a super big, fat waveform, lots of mid-range, lots of low end. And then we're just low-passing that. Which you can hear just makes it, like, the last little bit of deepness. And the resonance on the low-pass helps with that a lot. I've also got a little bit of an envelope just to make it kind of plucky. You can see the amp envelope is just like a long chunk like that though. 
And then we just have to go into some saturation to beef it up. And really, like, the thing is, is that this isn't really doing too much. Like, if you look at it, all the saturation that's happening here, it doesn't really have to do too much because the sound is already just really fat. But the little bit that it's doing is just making the bass really, really full and tying the low end and the mid range together. Then we have this EQ, which just cuts out a bit of room for the kick. And then we have a compressor to side chain that to the kick. And then we have the kick. So this kick is just like this nice, fat, bassy kick. Lots of like mid range punch to it. And this is the type of kick that you hear in a lot of these tracks, like that sort of like. It's almost distorted, but it's just really crunchy and really full sounding. And yeah, I've made one here. So you just want, like, it's really more so just about the type of kick that you're using. You know, you just want to make sure that you're getting something that's nice and boomy and fat with lots of mid range and punch to it, like this. And I shortened this one a bit too. This one actually had a bit of a longer in the one. Like, there's the kick normally. And then I just shortened it. And you can see I also pitched it to get it in tune with the bass. And then that's just going through some saturation. Same deal as with the bass. You can see the kick's turned up pretty loud. And it's just like a really fat kick. So we don't need a whole lot of stuff to make it work really well. You know, your tracks are going to sound best if you use sounds that you're still going to have to do some type of processing. Like, you can't just keep it dry. But you want sounds that don't need too much processing. Like, this is just a little bit of saturation on everything to glue the, the lows together. Here's without it. And with it. So you can see it's not too far off without it and with it. Like, it really feels... Like, this is just that last little thing that you do need. But if you have good sounds, it's not really going to be like... You know, it's already going to be there before this. And then adding this is what's really going to take it to the next level of professionalism. And yeah, then we have our hi-hats. So it starts with these two. What's happening here is these are the main hi-hat and it's two layers. So we have this one. Which is more from the punch. You can see I've shortened it. And this is just meant to be like a quick like. And then this one. Which is like our big fat open hi-hat. That's sort of like the main one. And the thing with this one is it's really big. You know, it's a bit long as well. But it doesn't have the punch to it. It doesn't have like the... Right on the start of the sound. So we just put this in. And I'll show you. So here's the big hi-hat without that layer. And then with it. It just rounds it out and makes it the perfect hi-hat. Because it's really punchy. But also really big and fat. And it's going to just like on top of the mix really nicely like that. And then we have our ride. So this is just meant to be kind of like background. This isn't like in techno where you would have a ride like this right up front. This is just to add some nice like high end to the groove. So I've just got that being high passed a little bit. And then we have the echo here, which is just to make this really wide. I just have it on the ping pong setting and it's really fast. There's without it. And with it, so you can hear it, it just kind of spreads the ride out so that it sits in a different place in the mix. And the last thing down here are just these little hi-hats going chick, chick, chick. So I just have two of them inside of a drum rack here. You know, having that variation, even though they're similar sounds, just makes it feel a lot more alive. And a bit more interesting and stronger. And then on the group of hi-hats, it's a pretty much the same deal as what I was saying with the kick and the bass, you know. We already have really good sounds, so you don't need a whole lot to really, like, make them shine. It just needs a little bit of saturation that's gluing them all together. And it's gonna, you know, you do want something to tie them all together. Because without this, and then with it, you notice how with it, they kind of all feel like they're coming from the same place. Like, they're all in that same, like, sonic texture, so to speak. And this is really the biggest thing about using the saturation. Even if it doesn't necessarily need like a ton of drum bus or anything like that, you still want something because it's going to give it all that same kind of even texture. And then we have these bongos. You can hear that's just a simple loop with these two bongos in a drum rack just meant to be kind of like a live one. Having something like that that's just constantly... Dun, 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 
like over and over and over actually does create a more hypnotic rhythm i think this really helps to kind of get you like invested in the groove even though it's a bit quiet in the background that's the point you know it's just something hypnotic that's gonna make the groove feel a bit more like kind of pulling you in then we have our clap and the last thing down here is just this rim shot and this bell which you can see kind of play at a similar time Oh uh, yeah, these are just meant to be sort of like the background percussion. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying with that vocal thing too. You notice these don't play while the brass and that distortion percussion are playing. I made sure to keep it so it's like... It all kind of happens like one after another rather than like if we did... You know, it clashes if you have them all playing at the same time, but this way. It's sort of like you have your main groove going. And then you have like these things coming in and out, but they're not all like happening at the same time. It's a bit more controlled and easier to focus on each individual sound. And yeah. So yeah, that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available right in the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. This is a really great way to support me. If you guys are enjoying these videos, definitely go pick up the samples because you get a great template and samples and MIDI and presets to work from. And it also really supports me if you guys enjoyed these videos. So yeah, thank you so much everybody, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow with another video.